Uh, so good morning to all of you, and um, I will uh, in a, just a couple minutes introduce the real the real act, which is the gospel choir, which is awesome, and I'm so excited to have them sing. It's a great way to to end the semester, but I want to make just a, a, a couple quick comments and then and offer a reflection. My comments um, have to do with the fact that we're all about to go into exams. I know in iBlock you're going to talk about it. Mr. Wilson's going to offer some comments tomorrow. Uh, I don't need to belabor this, but I, I really think that it's not that complicated to, to be in exams, especially the way we construct them. You have a lot of free time. Uh, and if, I, if I gave you a few pieces of advice, it'd be this. Don't brag or whine about how stressed you are. I hate that stress Olympics that people play. Um, it doesn't help anybody to say that you're working harder than someone else. Uh, whether you're a day or a boarder, <clears throat> try to organize your room well. That, that can make a difference. Put your work, you know, make, create one workspace and another which is your relaxed space. I think when you're reviewing material, just take multiple small passes at things. Uh, there's a lot of data that tells us that's how we learn things, not don't wait till the last minute. So take multiple passes and keep reviewing and testing yourself. And then the other thing I'd say is just maintain some perspective. I mean, your life is not going to be decided based on these exams. They're important. I want you to work really hard. I want you to do your best, but maintain some perspective on them. And I know you're going to do well. So let me, um, let me offer one reflection <clears throat> that, that in a way be, uh, ends the semester where we began. And I don't know if you remember, but I, I ushered a challenge on the first school meeting, if you may recall. I was talking about uh, conversation in the digital age, and I said, I hope that at some point, and hopefully often, each of you engages in conversation, remember the phrase is betters, better, a conversation that betters you, others, or the school. And I think it's a reasonable goal and, and, a, and a really important one. It can happen anywhere, <clears throat> in the classroom, at the table, in the dormitory, on a bus, and it can happen with anyone. It can happen with a classmate, a, a friend, a stranger, or a teacher. And I just wanted people talking and learning, listening with curiosity and empathy and with rigor and respect willing to contemplate new ideas and respect perspectives different than your own, <clears throat> willing to actually defend your own idea, but also be willing to be convinced of something new. I think I wanted what Trevor Noah wanted when he said, I just want conversation, conversation, and more conversation. Um, and so here's one I had recently, because I'm always surprised by how unscripted conversations can change or teach or provoke. So I was in my office a few days ago, my door opened, and uh, someone named Gary Wright, who's been a custodian here for almost 20 years and a great guy, Gary stopped in to talk. He had seen an excerpt and read an excerpt in the Alumni Bulletin from my remarks on that opening school meeting. He's very thoughtful. Uh, he's someone who knows this school well and loves it. And he shared an observation that was profound and accurate. The school has changed in his time here, he said. And as, he said, as we've, all of us, become more dependent on our devices and laptops. He said, it feels as if I see less of teachers and I talk less with students. He noted that he and Mr. McCabe had been just talking about this. And he wasn't angry. He just was observant. And what does it mean for all of us, he was asking. So that as someone with the perspective of 19 years of working here was asking, what does it mean? And what he was asking was what I was talking about that opening meeting. How do you consciously craft community in a digital age? And that means, how do you consciously create conversations when so many factors seem to conspire against that? He's worked here, as I said, for almost 20 years. So he could recall, and we laughed about, when teachers came to their post, off, uh, post office boxes that were on the main hall. We all used to do this, even not that long ago, some 20 years ago. Because you'd get the daily calendar, which was a piece of paper, and it would list which students were in the health center, what time maybe departures were for games. Um, it would give the events for the day. So that is, it was critical if you're a teacher that you actually had to walk over to the main hall, go open your PO box, which is right now where Mr. Lacase's office is, and you'd have to, and you'd end up talking to people because of that. He could recall, and again, we laughed about when, when you walked by, he would walk by a common room in the dorm, and, and dorm students would be playing board games and make eye contact easily. And often, probably because the TV was broken, the iPhone hadn't been in yet invented. And so it was much more natural, almost inevitable, that you would have those personal and close and unscripted exchanges. Now, we agreed the changes were neither good nor bad. This was not a, we need to go back to the garden talk. It was not about how terrible things are. And to be clear, we also recognize there are amazing gains that come from being connected the way we are. But he did do this. What he was reminding me of was how campus culture was at once incredibly sturdy, right, incredibly sturdy, 
but also delicately fragile. In other words, there's something beautiful and enduring in a place like this, which is unlike any other school, unlike any school, where we look each other in the eye, where we greet each other in the hallways, where we laugh together over meals, where we gather as we are right now. There's something really attractively human, even messy and unpredictable, at times astonishing, in the kind of exchanges that happen in a place like this. And I would argue each of you has a role in ensuring that we are a community that's based on personal interaction. Civil, challenging, respectful, illuminating, empathic, unpredictable interaction. That is, each of you, all of us as faculty members, everybody on this campus has a role in creating it. But what he is also reminding me of was how hard it, how hard it is that we have to be really thoughtful and deliberate in our policies and practices in order that we don't lose what makes this place work. We have to consciously put the device aside so our classroom attention is not interrupted. I think we have to force ourselves to engage in the unpredictability of conversation rather than text. We have to deliberately not check our feeds in the main hall so that we make eye contact and greet each other. We have to collectively agree, let's not at this moment have all our devices out as we have a meal together. So his, Gary's perspective was so affirming, it was so challenging, it was so valuable to me, and it was a conversation that absolutely bettered me. I never expected to have it, it came unscripted, and I came away happy that I had. So it made me think this last thought. You will be leaving in a week, right? When you go home to be on break with family and friends, I want you to really think consciously, that is, think hard about how to manage your device in order to make possible the face-to-face -face conversations which are not interrupted. And in today's world, these interactions don't happen easily. And it's for students and teachers, and it's for parents and children. This is not, that's, this is not anything that I don't also wrestle with as well. Put the device away at dinner with friends. Perhaps agree as a family that you'll have time when you are not checking it, and so on. And in today's world, you need to consciously craft these conditions. That is part of our existence today. I think a deliberate, conscious effort to think, how am I going to manage my digital existence so that I can have intense and uninterrupted connections with others? And if you do, you'll find closer than ever with someone you care about. Because you've worked really hard here for months. You've been away from those whom you are close. So my hope this vacation, and again, it'll happen soon, and I know you're looking forward to it, Allow yourself the chance to be fully and intensely present with those that you care about. Allow yourself to love them completely and in turn to be loved by them. I hope you come back after that break feeling rested and blessed by those around you. And so with that, in that spirit, let me uh, turn it over. I think, uh, the, I think the gospel choir knows I absolutely love gospel. Miss Gatling the other day was giving me a hard time saying I should join them. I said, I cannot sing a lick. You don't want that. But, but I've listened to gospel and blues my whole life. I love it. There's no choral music in my mind, uh, none, that is more uplifting, that makes us feel better. So as we get ready to close out the term um, and you want to be washed over by, by what great music sounds like, please welcome the incomparable Michael Brown and the Taft Gospel Choir. Bring it. How y'all doing? Doing okay this morning? I can't hear you. Are you doing okay this morning? If you're doing okay, say hallelujah. All right. Everybody say now, Jesus. Jesus, where he lies in the manger. 
folks got the holiday spirit today. You got the holiday spirit? McMillan, this is for you. The night was black, the roads were icy, snow was falling, drifts were high, and I was weary from my driving. So I stopped to rest for a while And I sat down at a truck stop I was thinking about my past I've had long, straight that bad love But 
around some, but I don't fall too easily, but that boy looks so dejected, he just grabbed my sympathy, sweet little soul now, tell me your problems, tell me why you're so downcast, I'll be alone, that bad love, but I'll pray that he's gone at last. Gone at last, gone at last, gone at last. I'm that long. Street that bad look, but I pray that it's gone at last. Get better. Right now. Things are gonna get better. Can you believe it? Right now. Things are gonna get better. Right now. Things are gonna get better. Come on, Tesco. 
soon. I would like to introduce our, our choir head. You guys know Katie? She's done a fabulous job with the choir. And she's gonna do a song called Seattle. Can anybody slap, snap? <laughs> snapping, snapping, snapping on twos and fours. Yes.